Hi, this video is all about the geology of coal, how it forms and how it develops over time to turn into what has been a useful resource. So, what is coal? Coal is defined as mineralized plant material, so plant material that's been incorporated uh, into sedimentary rocks. Deposited over quite a long period of time, it's also um, plant material that hasn't decayed, possibly because of limited access to oxygen, perhaps buried in an anaerobic environment, or possibly, and this is a theory that's been uh, put forward, that the bacteria required to break down uh, the wood uh, hadn't evolved when coal was forming in large quantity. Finally, the chemical composition of this material has changed with temperature and pressure as it's buried in sedimentary rocks. If we look at the composition of coal, clearly the key thing is that its carbon content it must be over 50% carbon. So an organic shale, for example, wouldn't fall under the definition of coal. If we only have uh, a little more than 50% carbon, there clearly must be other materials in as well. We have various impurities, uh, volatile matter like water, a collection there of other elements like sulfur and chlorine, uh, which can, of course, cause environmental problems when it's burned. In addition to this, there can be some other uh, materials in there, clastic materials, uh, fine-grained clays, for example, other elements that may have been incorporated during deposition. Now, coal forms in very particular sedimentary environments. It could be in freshwater peatlands, very often in uh, deltaic and alluvial uh, plain swamps, perhaps like the uh, picture shown here, uh, in marshes or in bogs. You'll notice that these all have a couple of things in common. Firstly, uh, plant material in abundance. And secondly, a lot of water, not only for the plants to grow, but also to bury the, the plants in rapidly after they die. If we have higher temperatures, high precipitation, for example, around, uh, such as around the equator, we can get uh, a large amount of plant growth. So these warm, wet environments generally have the most prolific plant growth, certainly what we see uh, in the world today. And it's there in a band around the Earth that we found, find the coal-bearing environments of the upper Carboniferous. The sediments that are produced have a distinctive pattern. We see uh, a sequence of rocks we call a, a cyclothem. A cyclothem, you'll see uh, from this sequence here, is one that goes uh, in a cycle going from deep water through progressively shallower water uh, to what's effectively a terrestrial environment back to deep water again. This is caused by fluctuating sea levels and also the mass of sediment being deposited, which um, will cause the crust to sink a little bit, which will also deepen water. These cycles, uh, as the name would suggest, get repeated continuously. So we'll find coal within uh, a, as a small part of the sequence uh, of largely clastic sediment. So, the organic material in these environments, when it dies, has four possible things that can happen to it. If it's exposed to atmospheric oxygen and bacteria, we see decay, and the result is no coal. 
If there's restricted uh, contact with atmospheric oxygen, it'll rot, it'll humify. So it may be turned into a soil, um, certainly break down, um, perhaps more significantly than uh, would be required uh, for coal formation. It could be immediately submerged, removed from oxygen, it starts to turn into peat, the first stage of coal formation, or into stagnant water, and it just sort of putrefies. If we look at coal formation, it happens in stages. First stage is the formation of peat, this partially decomposed uh, organic material, still used as a fuel in some of the uh, remoter parts of the UK. But it's dark in colour, it's quite spongy, certainly uh, contains a lot of water, and will perhaps have some recognisable plant features within it. Over time, with pressure and with some heat, these peat bogs will um, subside as a result of sediment being buried on top. That'll exclude all oxygen, so prevent any further decay. The weight will compact the material. And as it gets pushed deeper, we'll see increased pressures and temperatures. This leads to changes in both the composition and the texture of the organic material. These changes are referred to as the rank of the coal. It's not the same stuff. We classify it by the amount of change that's happened. If we look at the change going from a peat to a coal, it's taking from things from what we call a low rank of material to a higher rank we'll see a loss of recognisable plant material. It'll turn into um, what we call macerols, different types of coal material. It'll go from being quite a dull appearance to far more shiny. The hardness of this material will also increase. And we'll also have decreasing ash and other, other uh, impurities within uh, the coal. These different stages have names. We start with peat, with some pressure that turns into a material called lignite. As that continues uh, with more heat, pressure and time, we go through a stage called the subbituminous coal, bituminous coal, and finally we end up with anthracite, the highest rank and best type of coal. If we see what these look like, this is peat. You can see partially decomposed plant material, but still recognisable uh, plants within this. As this gets heated and pressured, it turns into lignite or brown coal. This is a, a very poor quality coal. Um, you can see still brown in colour, like the peat. Still some recognisable plant material in there, but less than we see in the peat. Um, still fairly soft and crumbly, but not with the same spongy texture as the peat. The first material we'd perhaps recognise as coal is this, the subbituminous coal. Um, it's still fairly soft. It uh, is, has changed colour, though. Increased carbon content means that this is now black. But... You can see it's quite a dull uh, material. As a coal, it's not fantastic. The better coal material would be this. This is bituminous coal. This is uh, higher quality, um, certainly uh, more heat that you get from this, uh, and less, slightly less pollution. You can see how this material looks a bit harder. We don't see any um, plant remains still recognisable within this, and it's starting to become a little shiny. 
Anthracite, then, is the highest rank of coal. This is virtually pure carbon. It's very shiny, quite hard, a bit denser uh, than other coals. will burn a lot hotter once you get it going. Um, and is perhaps some of the highest quality coal um, that we can use. These different types of coal all have different um, properties. These graphs summarise some of these different um, properties as we see the rank changing. Peat, you can see, has a relatively low proportion of carbon and higher proportion of other uh, volatiles. The volatiles decrease with coal rank. So that by the time we get to a high rank anthracite, there are virtually no volatiles at all, and it's virtually all carbon. The effect of this, as we can see in the graph on the left, is the calorific value, the amount of heat that can be derived from burning this material, increases with the rank, with the highest calorific value um, got from burning anthracite, so the most energy uh, per kilo, with also the uh, a reduced amount of other material that uh, as ash you have to deal with after it's burnt or as pollution coming off it. It's a much cleaner uh, version, although it has to be said, coal is not a clean fuel. So to conclude, coal forms in a very specific environment. We have had so much coal within the geological record because at a time when the trees that form coal had evolved, there was a large amount of landmass situated around the equator. Those places are where we find the good coal fields today. We also see, from the upper Carboniferous there, those rocks have been buried deep enough to change, so that their rank has uh, developed into producing more useful fuels. Now, as geologists, I think it's important to understand these processes. We do need to bear in mind, though, I think, that coal, even at the higher ranks, is a polluting fuel. It's perhaps a resource where we've seen its maximum use already. And as a fuel of the future, I'm not sure. Anyway, make sure you come along to class with your interesting question, and I'll see you there.